few hours ago on the members Facebook group. John is asking about storage, archiving raw files. Do you keep them all? Do you only keep your selects? Do you delete anything? My answer is a quick one for that. We're going to talk all of this. This is going to be my entire workflow. But to answer this question quickly, I use a program called Rosy, And what it does is it downsizes all of your raw files into DNGs. No quality loss, but it makes them significantly smaller. Let's talk, let's talk all about my entire workflow, start to finish. Once I get home from a wedding day, here it comes. Here we go. Just came home from a wedding day. Got my memory card. These are V90 cards. And I have a reader that also reads at that speed. One of the biggest upgrades in efficiency after coming home from the wedding has been to go to solid state drives. If you wanted to get even fancier, you could put some Velcro up here and Velcro on the back of your drive and you could, my friend Tim does that. Now we do the ingest process. When you're going from fast cars on a solid state drive, the process is very quick. I also have started culling all of my weddings the evening of the wedding. So I get home from the wedding day, I'm usually done around 10, 11 PM, come home and I actually go through all of those files the night of the wedding. I think Susan Stripling mentioned something like this, that she does that. And I was like, that's a good idea. On my drives, the folder structure is pretty simple. I'll usually have a folder called weddings, 2023, 2022, whatever. And within here, I'll just have the gallery. So gallery one, pretty standard. Within this, I will separate usually by photographer. So I'll put my cards, maybe Tim. And maybe if we have, if we did some dedicated audio coverage, I'll have an audio folder as well. And I may or may not, depending on how much I shot on each camera, I might split them out by camera. So I might do camera one or call it whatever it is. It's an R6 or an A7 IV II. You can call it what it is if you want. And you put those folders inside of the person that shot it. Pretty simple. One small addition that I didn't think about when I was sitting over there. I don't use any sort of software to do the import. I will drag the card into the folder and I will sit there and I will watch it. It only takes a minute or two, it's a solid state drive. And then after that, I will go through all the folders to make sure that all the files are appearing, nothing's grayed out or weird. And then I also keep the cards until I deliver. We'll talk more about kind of backup structure in a moment though. If I'm a solo by myself, it's simpler, it just goes into the gallery. So I have a sample gallery here. And within this is just every single image that I shot. So I shot, I guess, all on one camera today. So this was a, a video that you actually probably saw the, the full video, if it's up here if you want to go see it. And it is a full wedding day, myself only. So what I will do once everything's loaded in, I will load it all on my working drive and I will do a separate import onto my just permanent backup drive. So I have a spinny backup drive. Again, the link's in the description below. And with the exception of Rosy, it doesn't really get touched. So I'll use Rosy to make everything a little bit smaller and fit more weddings on that drive. But what I won't do is I won't edit from that drive. I won't move things around once it's there. It just stays and this is my working drive. So all of my editing is going to be on this drive. All of my backup is going to be on my backup drive. I will also do an offsite backup. You can choose what you would like. I've been using SmugMug for quite some time. So I actually use SmugMug and I back up all of my JPEGs. Another note that I thought of in editing is that you could also process everything through Rosy and back it all up in the cloud. And it actually makes it quite easy to back up an entire wedding day in the cloud, including the DNG raw files and not just your JPEGs. I do have multiple tiers of backup. So I have my working drive, my backup drive, and I will typically not wipe the cards until I've actually delivered the gallery. Lindsay has an interesting system right here where she actually labels. So the wedding and then the cards and on each of the cards, she'll have a number. So it'll say LC three and then she'll know exactly what all cards belong to the weddings. And until she has completely delivered the wedding, she will not wipe the cards. So as you can see, Lindsay shoots a lot of wedding, 20 or 30 cards in here. So that is another way that you can do that. So now I load into my computer and I begin with a program. Uh, I should timestamp this. This is November 2nd of 2022 right now. And basically what's happening is that after shoot is going to be doing both culling and editing and imagine who I currently use for editing is going to be doing both culling and editing as well as one solution. So you're no longer bouncing between programs. You'd be able to do it all in one, um, more to come on that and my findings with both of those systems. And I would like to call, and then I use after shoot. I'm not just going to click one button and everything's done. I'm going to click it. It's going to give me a pretty good idea of what images I should keep. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go over them all myself. So I'm going to start calling and you select wedding engagement and you can set your parameters. I have them set 
kind of like this. It gives me more images. You can do a tighter call with this if you want. And you begin culling. This all works on your system, so it is pretty fast. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit through an entire call process, but essentially after this, you can either refine your call within after shoot here, or you can go into a separate system. I have, I've personally been using Photo Mechanic for years and I like the having my culling separate from my post-processing. So you could cull everything in Lightroom. Sam Hurd has some great videos if you wanna learn how to speed up your Lightroom. I will typically just cull everything within here. So I'll use after shoot to give me an idea or specifically help out during the family formals. And I don't have to verify that eyes are yes open in every single shot on every single person. After shoot does that for me. And I would say that's probably the slowest part of culling. So I've gone through here and I have selected in red all of the images that I want to edit. And now, oh, wow, my voice is separated from my body. I'm now doing a voiceover. Here we are loading the images into Lightroom, which you've probably done a million times. You can build smart previews. You can not build smart previews. You don't have to do the one-to-one -one previews. It's pretty extreme. You should go up there. There you go. And you'll notice that absolutely your Lightroom goes a heck of a lot faster if you're on a solid state drive versus an old traditional drive. Um, as you can see, the import is going massively faster than had I been using a different drive. Everything's already been imported and it's building smart previews. So here is my gallery. I now send this over to Imagine, so I will use my main to edit or you can use one of the standard profiles. And you come over here and you select, or if you start a new Lightroom catalog for every wedding, that's fine too. And you add these images and you'll notice in the bottom status bar, when you begin to upload, little DNGs. And now I'm uploading everything to Imagine and within probably about maybe 10 minutes of it actually being there, it's going to send me back my final images. And another Imagine thing that I find to be very, very helpful is the straighten option. As if, you're, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know a lot of my family photos are always on a slight tilt. Everything is just on that one degree slant and this corrects for it all. It's actually quite incredible. However they did that, it's, it's really, really awesome. So imagine, and if you're interested, there's a link in the description to get some free edits. You get your, your final, I'm gonna say it's 95% as good as you would do it. It's a very, very nice place to start. It takes a few minutes. Things are a little bit drawn out because I'm, I'm talking about them, but this is a really, really fast process once you get it. And I would say typically I go through, maybe I change about 10, 15 images out of an entire gallery on a wedding day. After this, I'll typically go through and I'll hit command quotation and I will hit my black and white preset. I would say most of the time I'm using black and white 2022, but every now and then spring 2021, the black and white from that will actually end up performing a little bit better. It's a little bit more contrasty, so I guess it's just season to taste. But if you remember, you have access to all of these preset packs and actually uh, quite a few more. From here, I select everything. Also, these thumbnails haven't updated yet and I hit an export and that export will go to a folder. And what I actually do, so I add skin softening to every single image, but I do it automatically. I'm not, I'm not going through image by image and, and doing it myself. What I'll actually do is I'll go into Photoshop. This is more steps than I thought. I thought my work, workflow was very simple. So build an action for it right now. Uh, there's a video called the 98% trick that I use that basically squishes everything a little bit. So uh, if you shoot with longer lenses, it makes people a little bit, I don't know, it's not how people are used to seeing themselves in the mirror. So I squish them a little bit and I will actually build an action. So I will go up here and this is what I've created here. And to walk you through what I do, so I'm adding portraiture to everything. So we'll just build it right now. And I begin by going up here, Imagenomic Portraiture 3. And I leave it on default settings. This is AI, I guess. It, find, it finds the person's face and, and softens it. And then I fade it usually down to about Let's call it 61%. I don't want people to look too processed. And then I will save the image, so Command S. And then I will actually close the image, so Command W. And at this point, you have to go back into the image in order to stop this from recording. And then I delete this last step here. So this is what I do. So now, whenever I click this button, it is going to add 60% default portraiture to that image. If it doesn't detect a face, it's not gonna do anything. It's then going to fade it out, and then it's going to save it and close that image. And then what I do is I'll go here and automate batch. I will find that folder and then I will just run this on everything. So as soon as I click OK, it's going to go through every single image and it's going to do that action upon it. Depending on if you want to do the 98% squeeze or not, you can also add a step in here before you save it where you would actually go to image, image size, uncheck this box, come over here to percent and do something like 98% width. And then everybody just gets a little, little, little squish. So you can use that or you cannot use that. 
it is up to you. So now we've culled and we've edited. This brings me into the new step of my workflow where we actually, um, so there's different ways to use Rosy. You can use it, uh, I guess, the way that I use it is for archive, for storage. So after I'm done everything, I edit from the regular raw files and then I use this for archive. So I use this to make my galleries smaller in, in megabytes so that I can put more on a drive, that I can keep more with me on this drive as well. I find that I do this after I finish the gallery. You can also make these files so small that it's very, very easy to back everything up on the cloud as well. All right, so I'm going to go optimize for individual raw files and we're gonna go with workflow sample here and I'm just gonna open the entire thing. You may have seen the other option that was on the, the left-hand side here, and that is if you have a Lightroom catalog, you can actually just connect it to your Lightroom catalog. It'll do all this, and then it'll actually reconnect the raw files in the smaller downsized format. So the raw files, 2,700 raw files. And this is how fast it's going. So now with Rosy and the DNG version of it, you can see that this, this file is 13 megabytes. Let's go over here. Let's see what it is. So my Sony a7 IV, shot this and it was 38 megabytes for the raw file and with no quality loss, it's come down to 13 megabytes. So you're saving a lot of space. So that's a pretty substantial difference for no quality loss that now I can back up multiple more weddings on every single drive as well as back things up easily in the cloud. This is what a, a JPEG usually is. If you're shooting fine JPEG, you're probably shooting 13 or 20 megabyte JPEG files and now your DNG is that size. And I really do believe that the, the more you can keep things consolidated and organized, the better. Or if you just want to be editing from smaller raw files, if your computer just isn't able to handle or it's not handling as efficiently, uh, that you're able to go into a smaller raw file if you want to import them and work from these smaller files. Oh, and what do you do once you've edited the images? Can't believe I left this part out. I head over to Focal, Galleries, And then once I have a gallery, so this is one that I've, I've done in the past, here you go. And then they can download the gallery as a whole or just individual images if they so desire. And then you send it to your couple and life is good. Let's go back to the desk. So that is it. That is my workflow. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. There is links to Rosy and links to everything else that I talked about down below. So uh, head on over there and speed up your workflow, change your life and make yourself millions and millions of dollars.